Hi there! Do you want to know the cost of living in Charlotte, North Carolina? Stay tuned, it's coming right up! Hello there! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lynn Alvarez, a realtor with the LA Group of BXP Realty in Charlotte, North Carolina. If this is your first time on our channel and you want to know everything about real estate, neighborhoods, lifestyle, working, eating, playing, and living in Charlotte, North Carolina, start now by subscribing to our channel below and hit that bell button so you'll be notified every time we release a new video. We get a lot of calls from people from out of state asking, what is the cost of living in Charlotte, North Carolina, or can we afford to live in Charlotte, North Carolina? So we are going to be talking about the cost of living in Charlotte, North Carolina. Stay tuned. So here you go. Let's talk about the cost of living in Charlotte, North Carolina. There are several factors that drive the cost of living in a city. However, first we'll look at the U.S. Cost of Living Index. The average value on the U.S. Cost of Living Index is 100. By comparison, Charlotte has a value of only 77.97 on the cost of living index, well below the national average. Instead of detailing the cost of housing, transportation, healthcare, and others, I will take a different approach to illustrate the cost of living in Charlotte. Let's have two scenarios, so it is more realistic and easy for you to visualize how far your current paycheck will take you. Let's say a single person, well, let's call her Anna, just moved to Charlotte and started a full-time job as a marketing rep in a tech company making $45,000 a year. Anna needs to find an apartment near Uptown Charlotte where her new job is located. Homes or apartments around Uptown Charlotte, South Park or the Myers Park area are a little bit higher than on the outskirts of Charlotte. Anna is a millennial, so she wants to be close to her job, will be able to go shopping near the popular high-end South Park Mall, and because she's new to the area, she wants to be close to places to meet new friends. Anna finds a very nice luxury one-bedroom apartment running for $1,150 a month and within walking distance to Harris Cedar Supermarket, Whole Foods, her gym, and just three blocks away from her new office. Water is included in the rent, so she'll have to pay for the monthly bill for electricity, gas, cable, and internet, which total $175. Power and gas are very cheap in Charlotte. The big expense for utilities are cable and internet. Anna doesn't cook much and eats fast food for lunch and once in a while makes a simple dinner. If her average lunch is $9 a day, her monthly lunch expense on work days is $180. She goes to a supermarket for her household basic needs, breakfast, and dinner. She spends around $190 a month. Her car insurance for a Hyundai Sonata is $300 every six months. She doesn't drive a lot and gasses up twice a month. Currently, the gas in Charlotte is $1.99 per gallon, so she's spending around $75 per month. Although Anna's apartment has a fitness center, she still goes to a neighborhood gym, which is very affordable, like $15 per month. Anna's company provides health insurance to all employees. However, employees still have to pay part of the premium, let's say $100 per month, taken from her paycheck. Anna has new friends now that she goes out with on some weekends. They go to a restaurant, a bar, or some live concerts in Charlotte. She spends around $250 per month on entertainment and having fun with friends. She's a millennial who wants to hang out with friends. She loves shopping for a new wardrobe and shoes once a month. She has great taste for nice clothes and spends around $300 a month. Remember, the salary she's getting is pre-tax, so out of $3,750 gross salary, her monthly take-home pay is 
$851. It looks like Anna will save almost $400 a month based on this scenario, but she could save more if she manages the controllable factors such as the rent, lunch, entertainment, and shopping. To save more money, Anna needs to find an apartment outside of Uptown Charlotte for around $950 a month and she should pack lunch instead of going out, limit going out with friends, and avoiding frequent shopping. Now let's proceed to the second scenario, a family of four. Greg and Linda Jones moved from Los Angeles, California two years ago and settled in the southwest side of Charlotte, North Carolina. They have a seven-year-old son who goes to a highly rated public elementary school and a four-year-old daughter that Linda drops off every morning to her daycare center. Greg works as an engineer in the Ballantyne area while Linda is an accountant near Uptown Charlotte. Their combined income is $150,000 free tax. They bought a new construction home with four bedrooms, three and a half baths, 3,500 square feet in a beautiful community called The Palisades for $450,000. The Palisades is an amenity-rich community and close to shopping centers, schools, medical facilities, and Lake Wiley. The biggest expense, as you know, is housing. Depending on the amount of your home loan, your monthly mortgage can vary from $2,000 to $3,000 a month. Most lenders will escrow the property taxes and insurance, so they will be added to the principal and interest. The couple's mortgage is $2,500 per month. The tax value of their home is $410,000 and the property tax they paid last year, 2019, was $3,567, which is 0.87% of the assessed value. Their HOA dues are $263 per quarter with amenities the whole family can enjoy like the clubhouse, fitness center, outdoor pool, picnic area, playground, sidewalk, tennis courts, and walking trails. Their monthly utility bills. Water is $120 per month during the summer months because they run an irrigation system. Otherwise, it is $55 a month when the irrigation system is not in use. Garbage collection bill is $23 per month. Electric is higher in the summer due to AC use. It can go from $54 a month to $175 a month depending on the thermostat setting. Overall, the average power bill is around $107 per month. The Jonases have a gas stove and oven. Winter in the Carolinas is very mild and so heating up a house is not such a big expense. The gas bill ranges from $17.65 to $204, and the average is $88 per month. Cable and high-speed internet are $191 per month. This is something that you can negotiate with your provider when you set up an account with them. The couple hired a guy to mow their lawn every two weeks, and that is $45. Most new communities here in Charlotte have Bermuda grass, which is low maintenance and does not require weekly cutting. Leave your comment below if you have any questions about utilities, lawn maintenance, and others. Linda drops off their daughter on her way to work. They pay $250 per week for child daycare. Greg drops off their son to the elementary school near the Palisades. It's a public school, so it's free. Their car insurance is $650 every six months and their gas bill is about $257 per month. With the current economic situation, the price of gas in Charlotte is $1.89 to $2.09 per gallon. Having a car is a must, but we also have great public transportation here in Charlotte, such as buses and trains. Luckily, Greg's company covers their health insurance premium so no monthly contribution is taken out of his paycheck except for doctor's office visits and deductible. 
Greg and Linda love to take their children to restaurants for a family night out. Aside from the national chain of restaurants, Charlotte and its suburbs have many local restaurants to enjoy delicious foods from Asian cuisine to the famous Carolina barbecue. For a family of four, the usual check here in Charlotte is about $58 with tips. Leave a comment below if you want a list of local restaurants in Charlotte. Grocery shopping in a local supermarket is necessary for a family of growing children. It depends on your meal planning. You can spend $75 to $100 a week with all your basic needs such as milk which is $2.99 per gallon, sandwich bread is $2.69, a 12-pack large eggs is $1.89, Angus beef is $6.99 per pound, and of course, it depends on the brand that you prefer and if they are on sale, you can save even more. Leave a comment below if you want links to the local supermarkets in Charlotte and the surrounding areas. The biggest expense is housing, covering at least 45% of household expenses. According to the Charlotte Realtors Association for the month of August 2020, the median home price in Charlotte is $293,250, which is typically a three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath house of 2,000 square feet. If you go to the suburbs of Charlotte, Huntersville for example, the median home price is $356,500 or in Waxo, the median price is $458,750. Leave a comment below if you want to receive the market report in Charlotte and the surrounding areas. For people renting an apartment, one-bedroom apartments range from $850 to $1,350 depending on the location and amenities. You can also find homes for rent with at least a one-year lease term. This one just rented for $2,395 with 5 bedrooms, 4 full baths, and 2,825 square feet. Depending on the location, size, and age of the house, you can get a 4-bedroom, 2.5 baths house of 2,581 square feet for $1,975. Please leave a comment below if you're interested in receiving a list of homes for rent in Charlotte. Now let's talk about property taxes. The property tax in Charlotte and the cities in Mecklenburg County range from 0.87% to 0.98% of the tax value. For example, if you buy a house for $300,000 with a tax value of $280,000, your property taxes would be between $2,436 and $2,744. The utilities cover the water, garbage collection, electricity, and gas. Based on my illustration for a family of four, the total bill on utilities is less than $500 a month. Gas in Charlotte right now is very affordable. It's $1.89 to $2.09 per gallon. As far as car insurance, it depends on your zip code, driving record, type, and year of car. In my illustration earlier, the couple have two decent cars and pay $1,300 a year for car insurance. Currently in North Carolina, food consumers pay the local 2% sales tax on most groceries and the full 6.75% combined state and local rate on certain items including candy, soda, prepared foods, and dietary supplements. All right, so what do you think about the cost of living in Charlotte, North Carolina? Let's do an analysis. Let's compare Charlotte with Los Angeles, California because that's where we come from. For the Jonases who are making a combined $150,000 a year, they need to make $275,000 per year if they go back to Los Angeles to keep up with their expenses. Although, I don't believe they will be able to buy a nice home there just like what they have now in Charlotte, North Carolina. For Anna, she has to find a job that would pay her $82,282 a year in Los Angeles to maintain the standard of living that she currently enjoys in Charlotte, North Carolina. The average rent in Los Angeles for a one-bedroom apartment 
is $2,000 depending on the location. It's not anytime soon that you'll be able to afford to own a home in LA. Do you have any questions about the cost of living in Charlotte? Leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts about living in Charlotte. And are you thinking of moving to Charlotte? Let me know. Once again, my name is Lynn Alvarez, a realtor with the Alley Group of BXU Realty in Charlotte, North Carolina. If you have any questions about living in Charlotte, moving to Charlotte, or the topic that we just talked about, the cost of living in Charlotte, give me a call at 704-975-2429 or you can email me at len at lenalvarez.com. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell button so you'll be notified every time we have a new video. And if you need a relocation guide, please see the description below. Thank you so much and I hope to talk to you soon.